my name is Pillow, but you may also know me as Hunch on Twitch or the NA server. I made a post on Reddit asking if anyone would be interested in a video explaining how you can use Swarmos effectively in ZVP. From the overwhelming positive response, um, I've decided to do the video. Um, to start with, uh, for those who don't know, the Swarm hosts have become a rather obsolete unit in, in at least the, the higher leagues and in almost any professional play. Um, and I've seen a few players, uh, players like Cats, um, use Swarm Host very well in ZVZ, um, along with Lurkers, Vipers, and Static Defense. Um, but this only occurs in very late game scenarios where he starts making swarm hosts at maybe 20 minutes or maybe even 30 minutes. So very late into the game, and other than that, we don't really see them almost ever. Um, and I think that's a shame, because it, it's a unit um, that we have that we're not taking advantage of at Zerg, and yeah, I just have some... I, I like the swarm host, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so, let's get into this replay that I prepared. Um, so, as a disclaimer, um, I'm not perfected this style of play by any means, and I don't fully understand its potential. But that's what I want to share, the potential of Swarm Hosts. Now, we can start off by talking a bit about the map. Um, it's very close by air, so a lot of Protosses tend to open with Stargates, either one Stargate or double Stargate. Um, the ground uh, rush distance is pretty far, and we're going to use this to our advantage. Basically, our game plan um, is to break down these rocks, have our swarm hosts here, and send waves of locusts to deny his fourth, um, or to deal damage in the main, where he'll probably have gateways and some tech, and maybe even move into the, the probe line. Um, so we start the game off pretty standard, and we open with uh, hatch, gas, pool. Now we open with gas um, to get the link speed, just to stay, stay, just to stay safe. And uh, he scouts me, um, standard. He opens with gateway nexus, also standard. And he's going to move to the, my third here, and pylon block it, which is fine. Well, not really. I hate it, but um, it happens. <laughs> and uh, we're going to keep mining gas. We're going to speed it up here a little bit. We're going to keep mining gas after we get link speed for the overlord speed. And we're going to get the overlord speed just for scouting with our overlords. Um, so we're send out a drone here to our third, and oh, well, it gets pylon blocked. That's a bummer. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take an earlier gas here. And I should also mention that while I'm getting my overlord speed, I'm also making a third queen. I make this queen to spread creep. Um, creep spread is going to be very important for us. Um, but I take this gas, um, and that's basically because I know that uh, gas is going to be a useful resource, and I'm going to be floating minerals here, so I might as well take the earlier gas. He comes in with an adept here. And that gets denied, but it does slow down. It does kill my four lings, which I sent to kill this pylon, and it's going to slow things down a bit more. So I send over the queen, and we'll eventually clean this pylon up to take our third. Now, after the overlord speed finishes, uh, we're going to send in this overlord here and start a lair. And after the lair, we're going to start the infestation pit. And now we see him put down two more gateways. And as the Overlord slowly comes along here, we're going to see Double Stargate. Double Star Stargate is pretty standard now. Um, it's very strong, I think. Um, I lose to it a lot. And it's uh, especially strong on this map uh, because of the short distance by air between the bases. So, we're going to make another queen, we're going to put down lots of spores, and we're also going to slowly try and break down these rocks. Um, and as the game goes on, we're going to get the infestation pit and two evolution chambers. 
you also notice that we have all four gases and we're fully almost fully saturated on two bases and with these evolution chambers I'm gonna start getting Ling upgrades or the melee upgrades uh, carapace and melee attack ground upgrades and uh, the reason for this is because I know that if he's going double stargate, I won't be able to make swarm host for a while because he's just going to pick up my swarm host and kill them off with his phoenix. Um, so, yeah, I, I I I was going to go for the missile attacks, but then I cancel it and I make the plus one carapace and the plus one melee uh, attack. Um, so we continue here. He's doing his harassments. I get my spores up. Two in the natural. Three in the main base. I'm not sure why I got this spore here. It should be a bit closer here, but that's fine. We get a spore here as well um, to make sure that we kind of have a good passing point for our drones here, or transferring drone point for our drones. And then I think we pick off a phoenix there with our two queens, and we start another queen, and we start some spores on this base as well. All the meanwhile, we're spreading our creep um, to make sure we get that going. And now I have this overlord here. I would have liked to poop some creep there, but um, alas, he got to he got to the third nexus before I got there. Um, so things go on, and now you notice I'm getting pathogen glands. The reason I get pathogen glands is because he's he's got a lot of phoenix, um, and he's still producing phoenix. Although I don't know that, um, I can tell he's got a lot of phoenix here, and I'm not going to be able to go swarm host without infestors, um, or without something to kill the phoenix. Um, so I'm going to get an, a lot of infestors to try and kill the phoenix with fungal. You see, I'm nicely based stack. Just imagine like six infestors, just kill that for free. Yeah. Anyways, hmm. um, so. This isn't a bad thing for us, because we're going to want to get infestors anyways. Um, infestors are going to be... I'm trying to think of an analogy here, but they're going to be important <laughs> um, to uh, our composition. We're basically going to want to use the infestors to lock down his ground army for our locusts to kill them. That way he won't be able to run away from the locusts, which is the main problem with locusts right now. Um, we also get a Baneling Nest. Um, I'm not sure if Banelings are the best way to go, um, but I'm, I am, the idea I have is if I'm going to have these Infestors to lock his army down, then I can also utilize Banelings to kind of, um, while his units are all clumped up in a fungal, he won't be able to move back or split, so the Banelings will be able to do be a lot more effective than they normally are in ZVP. Um, so we start making 10 infestors, um, might be a bit much, um, but I think it's fine. We had a lot of gas banked up, and uh, we're going to start burrow as well. Burrow is very useful with infestors as they can move underground, and that way you can kind of sneak up on the phoenix. Uh, we're going to continue spreading creep. Ideally, I would have wanted to spread creep down this way. Um, so that we can have a bit more safety when we're trying to send our locust waves from here. Um, unfortunately, I I forgot to do that. Um, but we have spores here. We, I make a couple more spores here because um, I'm not going to be able to kill Phoenix with my army. Um, so where my army is, I'm going to want to have spores. Um, so we get the nice fungals here on the Phoenix and the right on the two spores as well, so I don't have to waste that much energy. And we're going to start making some lings. Normally I would have wanted to make these lings a bit sooner to take down these rocks and these rocks for our fourth base, um, but I forgot to make the lings. As I said, I'm, I'm nowhere near perfect. Um, and we're going to take our fourth here instead. This fourth is a bit more exposed, um, but that's that's okay for the most part. Um, ideally, I want to take this fourth here, and um, it's a lot safer. Um, since we're going to be attacking from here with our, or our plan is that we're going to be attacking from here with our swarm hosts, this is going to be a pretty safe place to take a fourth, since we're going to have our army here, and we're going to have infestors here, 
and a lot of things and banelings. It's kind of a, a, a much more mobile way to defend our bases. So we're going to take this fourth here, and then at the same time, I also take this base here. Continuing to creep spread, my opponent could have done a lot better in trying to deny my creep spread. It, you can see it's kind of going wild. Um, that's good for us, um, but he should be denying that in an ideal world. And he has a pretty strong army here. He's got the immortal charge lot standard kind of thing with storm even. He got pretty early storm. And he's also taking his fourth base base now. And now you'll see he actually has more probes than I have drones. Um, I don't know if he over drone uh, over probed. Uh, he might have. He's got yeah a ton of probes. Um, and I guess that's okay. <laughs> but yeah. You see, here's our army. Now we've made the swarm host. 14 swarm hosts to start with. And I got the, the plus two melee attack. Uh, I think this should have been missile attacks, honestly, but um, alas, I forgot to do that as well. And we're also going to get a hive behind this. Um, why, you ask? That's because um, in my games, um, after I've gone swarm hosts and I've kind of killed most of his army or um, something like that, he's going to start transitioning into Colossus. Colossus are also kind of an obsolete unit, but they, they deal very well against locusts because of their splash damage. So good thing or good unit to counter um, Colossus is to make Ultralisks. And although it's not like the strongest counter to Colossus, I guess. Um, that would be like Corruptors or something. But um, the idea is that if he's making Colossus, he's not making Immortals. And Immortals are really what kind of makes Ultras not viable in CVP very often. Um, so once we kill his Immortals with our Locusts and he starts making Colossus, um, I'm going to want to make Im Ultralisks. Um, so let's continue on here. And you see we're ahead in resources lost, but our income is worse than his. And that's, we're ahead because we got the fungal on the phoenix. And so we see his army move out here as he starts clearing up the creep. Um, and this is a good time for us to try and engage with his army as it is still on creep a little bit. And uh, I'm going to try and get a good fungal here. So I get a fungal on two immortals, um, it's okay. And then again, the same two immortals, and then we're gonna, he's gonna try and defend here, defend these two immortals and try to take on my army. And then I send out the locusts, and he just, yeah, this happens. Yeah, look at that, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And we get a good trade there. Look at that, we're 2,000 resources ahead. Awesome. And yeah, that's uh, that's the strategy, I guess. <laughs> and then we have these locusts here. Um, I guess I can just continue walking you through the game um, as things happen. Um, I'll show you the, the ultralisk transition as well. I'm gonna make more lings here. Um, the lings are very good to defend it against War Prism Harass and defend your outer bases like this one. Um, yeah, so let's speed this replay up. We're getting our plus three uh, carapace upgrades, that's good. And we clean up his uh, War Prism Harass and we pretty much have the ideal army to deal with any Protoss ground army now, I feel like. Because locusts, they just they deal so much damage, so so much damage. It's just insane how quickly they can kill an army. Um, but yeah, as we see here, he starts making colossus. What a surprise! And uh, this is good for us because we're we're anticipating this. Oh, and missed another awesome trade there. Let's have a look at that again. Okay, let's slow it down. Here we go. follow these units. So he's doing his War Prism harass and we deny that and he's trying to like, he's posturing here um, 
trying to make something happen, but then he gets fungled. Yep. And that's just all these units, six immortals, and I think three high templar, just gone for free. Which is just insane. And we've barely lost anything since we last looked at the resources lost, and we're 6,000 ahead here. So it's, just, it's crazy cost efficient this is. And as you can see, we're still, oh, we're about even in income now. He's way oversaturated here. And he can't really take a fifth base um, unless he tried to take this one, which I'm taking now. And, or if he tried to take this one, which I think I'm sending my links right now to see if he has taken that one. I'm gonna try and deny it, of course. Um, yeah, and now you see here, the, the swarm host that I sent here. Finally, 14 minutes into the game, our plan came to fruition. And we're going to try and deny his fourth base here, or at least trade, or just get some units for free here. Now, we see the Colossus, that's great. We kill one, even better. And we're going to continue extending our lead here, and the resources lost. Um, at this point, I feel like I've pretty much won the game. I'm ahead 40 supply. That's awesome. And I even add in a few Vipers, because I see he's, he's made some more Phoenix, so I can Fungal Parasitic Bomb that. Um, I think that was a mistake by me, actually. I shouldn't have made the Vipers. It, it just adds one more thing of the many things that I need to do in a fight. It makes things hard. And uh, I also need to work out a better way to deal with these Warp Prism Harass Drops. I think I, I throw down a Spire eventually, but um, I never make any units off it, because I have all these upgrades for more for a ground army. Um, but yeah, and then we send off some locusts here again, just denying mining, killing the gateway or something, or any units really. Any value that we can get is welcome. And you see, he's not going to attack up here because he has to kill these rocks first, and he, he could easily, pretty easily at this point, kill the rocks and try and push through here. But that would take time, and that time is all I really need with the swarm hosts. You know, if he's going to take the time to kill down these rocks and try and move across here, by the time that's happened, I'll have another Locust Wave ready. And now he he starts pulling me apart here a little bit, um, but I have such a huge bank. And you can see that I'm not really maxing out on anything, um, because I'm waiting for the, the Ultralisk transition. Um, and I'm actually, yeah, I'm just waiting around to transition into Ultralisks. He's even up in supply here. So he tries and take his fifth base here, which he desperately needs, and you see he has two immortals and not a whole lot to deal with um, ultralisks. And I make a mistake here, actually. Um, I make more swarm hosts. Um, I really didn't mean to do that. Um, what I really meant to do is to make ultras, but it, oh, actually, I I haven't made the ultralisk cavern yet, so I don't make that mistake yet. Now I make it. Um, more swarm host, that's fine. So we have a pretty pretty scary army here, and he does kind of a good thing there. He takes his whole army, snipes off my fifth and my sixth, or yeah, my fifth and my sixth base, and then uses his recall to get out his army without losing anything. Very smart. Um, at the same time, he also denies this base with his uh, Dark Templars and a War Prism. So yeah, as I said, we're gonna get the, the Ultralisk Cavern going, um, and just, yeah, trying to get this lead. And uh, now we're behind in supply again. Um, not, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, at, in this situation, I'm just not sure exactly what I want to make. Um, at least not yet. Um, I think, Basically, I'm just waiting for me to lose enough swarm hosts, or to get as much value out of them as possible, um, and then make the ultralisks. And as you see here, like even though I was down in supply there, I still take a very good trade. And we're 11, 12,000 uh, resources ahead in the units lost tab. It's just insane. He's lost twice as much as I have. And uh, we're going to try and retake this fifth base. 
and here you see I make 19 swarm hosts. That was a mistake. Um, I meant to make the ultralisks, um, but unfortunately I have the ultralisks and the swarm hosts hotkeyed next to each other, so I press H instead of G and make 19 swarm hosts. With uh, with ultralisks instead of swarm hosts, I could have or should have been able to just outright kill him. Um, but instead, this gives him a shot of staying in the game, just because swarm hosts are um, they're not very good at just killing your opponent. So what you're going to see here is just, I'm just going to send in my swarm host eventually, like in here, and just sacrifice them so I can remax on ultralisks. Um, so blah blah blah, things happen. Swarm hosts get value. Feels good, man. And then we send, we make a few ultralisks and just deny these bases here. That's nice. Um, <laughs> and then I say, yeah, this this army is hard to control. It really is. You have the infestors, the the vipers, and the swarm hosts and everything. Um, but it is very rewarding. It is so good. And then we add on a Hydroden, because we see he's starting to make Void Rays. Uh, void Rays, I think they're pretty good, because, yeah, Void Rays are good against Swarm Host because they're armored. So Void Rays will just kill them really fast. Um, so that's fine. We're going to remax on Ultras and um, Hydras. So we go in there, we just sacrifice our Swarm Hosts unnecessarily. We take out the or we try to take out the robotics facilities, that way he can't make um, immortals anymore, and we just, with our remax on ultralisks and hydras, we just kill him. Yeah. What a game. Feels good, man. And that's basically how, how you can use swarm hosts. Swarm host, infester, lingbane really cost-efficient uh, unit composition, lacks a bit of mobility, which is why creep spread is so important, and positioning is really important. Positioning like this, um, when you have these rocks to kind of keep your swarm host safe, or and stuff like that. And then the eventual ultralisk transition, which is why you, or one of the reasons why you also want to be getting the melee upgrades at the same time as you're getting your range upgrades for your lings and eventual ultras. And then you can also sw switch into Hydras against Void Rays, or if he tries to go Carriers. Um, you'll have those fully upgraded as well, which make them much, much better. Um, yeah, and then, as I said before, you get the Ultras because he's going to start making Colossus. And so you deal with, uh, with it that way. And I guess that's it. Yeah. Thank you for watching. And uh, I think I have one more thing to show you, just for the guy who who said on Reddit that he th he wanted this to be a, a troll video, where I show you guys just some swarm host drops. Um, and I'm going to show you that swarm host drops are not a troll, and that they're actually really good. 